In this video, we're going to talk about what are GPUs and why GPUs are so popular in today's high performance or even mobile computing market. To understand this question, we need to give a brief review of how CPUs work. I assume all the audience have used a CPU before or even have programmed a CPU before. Everyone should also be very familiar with the concept of cores as it's a very common marketing terminology. But how do cores work? And how do computer architects make cores run faster and faster with new features? Let's look at a regular program, something like this. So this is a Hello World example written in C++. And we typically use G++ or Clang to compile it to a binary. The binary is actually a list of instructions for the CPU to execute, which is just encode it in a way that is not very suitable for humans to read it, but your cores love it. To execute the program, the binary is first loaded into the memory at a certain location. This is done by the operating system. Then, the CPU core will load the binary from the memory system and execute instructions one by one. So a key concept is that each CPU core can only execute one thread at a time. If the CPU wants to execute another thread, the state of the currently running thread must be stored back to the main memory, and the operating system will have to retrieve the state of the other thread from the main memory back to the core, so that the CPU core can execute the other thread. This process is also known as context switching. In summary, for most of the CPUs, one core can only execute one thread at a time. There is something I want to discuss beforehand. That is how computer chips can improve performance in general. If you consider a chip as a combination of a lot of components, where each component may have a huge number of transistors, two natural properties dominate how they work. First, these components are independent, and they can work at the same time. Second, communication takes time. So at one time, these components cannot work on the same task. For example, if you have one instruction that loads the number and another instruction increments the number, the incrementation task must happen after the load task, and these two actions cannot happen simultaneously. To improve performance, we want all the components to work towards the final results. But they have to work on different tasks. Or, if we formalize this principle, we call it parallelism. That is, we execute different tasks in parallel. Following the parallelism principle, there are several ways that the CPU can improve performance. One way is to use instruction pipelines. The execution of each instruction may be divided into several pipeline stages. Say, we have an instruction. The instruction is fetched in the first stage in the first cycle. In the second cycle, the instruction moves to the second stage, while the hardware of the first stage can execute a second instruction. Doing so, the core is effectively executing more than one instruction at the same time. Another solution is called superscalar. So basically, there can be more than one execution unit in one core. Say if a core has an integer unit and a floating point unit, the core can execute one integer instruction and one floating point instruction at the same time. Note how I'm phrasing my word here. I'm saying that one core is executing more than one instructions at the same time. Since the granularity here is instruction, we name it instruction level parallelism. In fact, instruction level parallelism is hard to exploit because it's just not the way how people write programs. No matter what program languages use, you would assume the line in your program are executed one after another, right? So your core is struggling to reorder those instructions to make them run parallelly, but the result is still the same as if they are executing in order. How hard is that? Overall, we typically say the degree of instruction level parallelism is just not very high. Meanwhile, CPU also utilizes thread-level parallelism with multi-core designs. In other words, a CPU can execute several threads at the same time. However, limited by the design that one core can only execute one thread at a time, CPU typically cannot execute too many threads in parallel. 
for lower end GPUs, the number can be two or four. Even for the most high end GPUs, the number is about 64 to 128. Okay, so far we have been talking about CPUs. Let's also take a look at the problems that we're processing nowadays. Let's use this simulation as an example. This type of simulation is called finite element simulation. In the simulation, the algorithm first divides the material to be simulated into a large number of small elements. Then in each iteration, each element needs to calculate the force that applies to the element. By only considering the adjacent elements, as we can see, the calculation for each element is independent of another element. So in other words, we can just run one iteration of the simulation of each element in parallel and still get a correct result. Since the opportunity for parallelization comes from the problem or the data itself, we call it the data level parallelism. Can CPUs exploit the data level parallelism? The answer is mostly no. Why? If we write a CPU program, we probably will write it in a big loop in one thread. But CPUs can run only a few threads at the same time. But the number of elements in this simulation can be millions to billions. There is a huge gap between thread level parallelism provided by a CPU and the data level parallelism available in the problem itself. But the GPU can exploit this data parallelism. GPUs, or graphics processing unit, are originally designed for 3D rendering. We can describe 3D rendering at a high level as a problem that converts a large number of vertices to colors of a large number of pixels on screen. In the first step, we use a set of vertex shaders to calculate the colors of each vertex. You may keep hearing about the term shader. It can be either a hardware or software concept. The shader basically is a piece of software or hardware that calculates the color. In one thing on the screen, there can be millions to billions of vertices, and the algorithm used to calculate the color of each vertex are pretty much the same. So GPUs can simply process each vertex in parallel. GPUs run the same program to process different data. Similarly, since there are a large number of pixels, GPUs can use the same program to process the color of each pixel. Because of the unique characteristic of the GPUs, GPUs are designed to utilize data parallelism so that they can process vertices and pixels with the highest performance. Because the GPUs are designed to explore data parallelism, and the data parallelism exists in many problems, people start to use GPUs to process applications other than graphics rendering. In many applications such as gene alignment, physics simulation, cryptocurrency mining, or artificial intelligence, GPUs can be tens to hundreds of times faster than CPUs. That is why we teach GPU programming in this course. I hope after taking this course, you will be able to harness the power of GPUs to accelerate your program.